Hello everyone and welcome to Edusol's Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to start our second part of our discussions on inguinal hernia. And in this part, we are going to see the clinically relevant points on inguinal hernia. So we have already discussed the inguinal hernia anatomy, both open and laparoscopic, as well as ventral hernia anatomy. There is video of surgery for inguinal hernia as well as ventral hernia on our channel in the step-by-step -step surgery playlist. So you can have a look at that as well. So what is a hernia? It is an abnormal protrusion of a viscous or a part of viscous through an opening which may be natural or artificial, basically post-surgical, with a sac covering it. You have to remember the definition of hernia verbatim, very commonly asked question. It's an abnormal protrusion of a viscous or a part of viscous through an opening, which may be natural or artificial with a sac covering it. So then what are the parts of hernia? From this definition only, there is a cover, which is usually the abdominal wall layers. For the inguinal hernia, it will be abdominal wall layers. There is a sac which is the peritoneal uh, covering and then there are the contents of the hernia which can be intestine, omentum, many other things as we will see in this video. Now when we come to the sac or the parts of hernia sac, remember that it is like gallbladder. So these two are commonly asked questions and we often get confused. So parts of hernia is the abdominal wall layers as the covering then the sac and then the content when it comes to inguinal hernia and parts of hernia sac are just like gallbladder. We have seen gallbladder anatomy as well. The parts are fundus, body and neck. So some books also give mouth, which is the opening of the hernia, then the neck where the ring will be there, then the body and the fundus. So these are parts of the hernia sac. So now what causes hernia? A very commonly asked question. So risk factors of inguinal hernia are multifactorial. It can be congenital or acquired. So that is one way of classifying a hernia. Congenitally, it is commonly seen in patients suffering from Marfan syndrome, Etler danlos syndrome, osteogenesis imperfecta. Patent processes vaginalis is present in these patients, also seen in patients with bladder extrophy and prune belly syndrome. The ones marked in red are the most common acquired causes that you will see in your clinical practice. One is previous surgery and that is an iatrogenic cause. Smoking is a very common associated factor and we all know that you need to stop smoking for at least four weeks if you are planning a surgery. Chronic cough, chronic constipation, bladder outlet obstruction, basically due to prostatic hypertrophy, very commonly seen. Advancing age leading to muscle weakness, chronic malnutrition. In current era, gymming, heavy weight lifting, we have seen patients coming up with hernia after that and patients with peritoneal dialysis. Multiple pregnancies, obesity, ascites and pelvic tumors are also risk factors. So all these conditions can predispose to an inguinal hernia formation. Now classification of inguinal hernia is a very commonly asked question and there are many ways to classify an inguinal hernia and we are going to see each of the classification and through this classification list you are also going to understand a lot about inguinal hernia. That is how this part has been structure. So congenital versus acquired, we have already seen in the risk factors. Anatomically, and this is the most common classification that most of you will know, that is direct hernia versus indirect hernia. This is based on its relation to the inferior epigastric artery. We know that the neck of the indirect hernia is lateral to the inferior epigastric artery whereas the neck of direct hernia is medial to the inferior epigastric artery. When both direct and indirect are present in the same patient, it is known as a pentalunes hernia. So that is the anatomical classification. We will see an entire differential between direct and indirect hernia once we are closer to clinical features and management of inguinal hernia topics. Now, based on content, 
it can be an enterocele which contains intestine it can be an omentocele which contains omentum it can be retroperitoneal organs such as cecum or urinary bladder sigmoid colon and this is known as a sliding hernia remember that all of these are very commonly asked questions so remember each and every term of this presentation part of circumference or bowel can lead to rictus hernia and these patients present with diarrhea so part of circumference of the bowel is rictus hernia meckel's diverticulum as content of hernia sac the name is litter's hernia then you have two intestinal loops with the common part in abdomen so a w kind of hernia where the common part is in abdomen but there are two intestinal loops in the hernia that is known as medals hernia appendix in the hernia is mens hernia and we have a case series of around four cases of mens hernia when the appendix is inflamed in the hernia it is not known as mens hernia and i would keep this as a quiz you can find out what a hernia containing an inflamed appendix is known as if you can't find out just search for the article the case series that we have written on mens hernia and you can find it there based on the extent of hernia so if the hernia is reaching only outside the internal ring but not crossing the external inguinal ring then this is known as a bubonocel and that is an incomplete hernia so sac is confined to the inguinal canal but it will not reach the external ring if it crosses the external ring but does not reach the bottom of the scrotum or the testis this is known as the funicular type of hernia okay so bubonocele and funicular are incomplete inguinal hernias the complete hernia is also known as a vaginal hernia sac descends to the bottom of the scrotum so that is a complete hernia or a scrotal hernia or a vaginal hernia now coming to natural history of disease and this also results in a classification this is one of the most important slides in our entire hernia discussion this is because this slide is giving you the basics that are not very clearly given in most of the books so i always use this classification to explain how a hernia can progress okay so according to the natural history or clinical findings an uncomplicated inguinal hernia is the one that is reducible we will see what is reducible what are the clinical features of reducibility the best book for this is as das but what you have to remember is that a reducible hernia is the only uncomplicated inguinal hernia all the other are complicated an irreducible hernia is a hernia where the protruding tissue cannot be returned to its normal position now don't confuse these terms because incarceration is also a term then you will see obstruction is also a term you will see strangulation is also a term in this classification so reducible then irreducible irreducible just means that the contents cannot be replaced inside the most common cause is additions and not obstruction or incarceration okay so incarceration is irreducible but it is not the only cause of irreducible and these two terms are not to be exchangeably used okay so incarceration means that the hernia contents get stuck outside the abdominal cavity and they cannot be pushed back in so this is different from an irreducible hernia where the protruding tissue cannot be returned to its normal position which can be because of additions whereas in incarceration the contents are themselves stuck outside the abdominal cavity and they can't be pushed back in an obstructed hernia it's an incarcerated hernia where the intestines lumen is blocked so it is an enterocele which is incarcerated and where the lumen is completely blocked causing a mechanical bowel obstruction so obstruction occurs in the intestine which is incarcerated and hence irreducible if you get the sequence strangulation can occur in 
incarcerated hernia where a bowel is there, irreducible hernia where omentum can be there. So any hernial content where the blood supply is cut off, that is the meaning of strangulation. Okay, so cutting off the blood supply of hernia contents is strangulation. It can happen in any of the irreducible, incarcerated or obstructed hernias. So this is essentially the natural history of hernia. Clinical findings where you will be able to elicit various signs to identify hernia that is reducible, irreducible, incarcerated, obstructed or strangulated. So remember from above discussion, all incarcerated hernias are irreducible, right? But all irreducible hernias are not incarcerated. So this is a very important point that irreducibility has multiple causes. Incarceration is one of them. Similarly, all obstructed hernias are incarcerated because if they go inside, then the lumen will open up, right? So all obstructed hernias are incarcerated, but all incarcerated hernias are not obstructed. Remember this slide for the rest of your life. Whenever you see a patient of hernia in the inguinal region, it will fall in one of these categories. So this classification is very important to understand inguinal hernia. Now coming to some named classifications, we have a Gilbert's classification where type 1, 2 and 3 are indirect hernias. You can divide them using finger breaths, but basically it is small, medium and large indirect hernia. Type 4 and 5 are direct, large and direct diverticular. Type 6 is direct plus indirect and type 7 is femoral. So this is a Gilbert's classification only of exam importance, not used in clinical practice, but commonly asked in exams. We also have something known as a NIHAS classification where you have type 1 and 2 as indirect, type 3 can be direct or indirect, but the posterior wall is damaged and type 3C is femoral, okay? Type 4, A, B, C, D, you have direct, indirect, femoral and pentalumes. Again, a classification of academic importance only, we don't use this clinically. In upcoming parts, we will look at the clinical features, the differences between different hernias. Remember that hernia is a clinical diagnosis, so that is important. We will look at the surgery complications of hernia as well as hernia surgery and the recent advances that are happening in the field of inguinal hernia. Thank you.